Well, hi everybody. It's nice to meet you again. As I said, I'm Shannon with Habitat for Humanity. This is Kelly, Debbie, Darnell. Um, we're really excited to be here. There's some um, remarkable things that are happening in and around uh, Oak Park in connection with Daddy Square, in connection with um, Alley Trust Funds, um, in connection with a variety of work that's happening. Um, as many of you know, we may uh, you may have already participated in Rock the Block. Habitat has been part of the community um, consistently for the last six years to Rock the Block, but we've also, in our 37 years, um, have built over 60% of the 100 and now 64 homes that we've built over the past 37 years have been in um, the Oak Park region, particularly 95820, 95817, and 95824. So um, we love Oak Park as an organization. And personally, we love Oak Park. Um, so we have some really exciting things that are happening. Um, thanks to um, investments from the city of Sacramento. Um, as before we get started, I just want to clarify to everybody that these are not investments in Habitat for Humanity. These are investments in Oak Park and the, and the Aggie Square Corridor. These are investments that the city of Sacramento has entrusted Habitat for Humanity to be the conduit for. Um, and so everything that you'll be hearing our, my, me and my colleagues talk about tonight um, are investments in your community and investments that we want you to partner on. Um, and that uh, OPNA and Adrian have been working on a survey and we will be requesting your feedback in a variety of ways. Um, and before we get started, I just want to apologize because Kelly's got a really robust PowerPoint presentation that I put together for her and then I ran out of time. So Darnell and I are going to be more off the cuff and have some handouts for you instead. <laughs> so, um, so I appreciate your, your grace on that. So at that uh, point, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly. Okay, perfect. You're going to be keeping my buddies, right? I am the Indian of that perfect. <laughs> Shannon made these slides very fancy. So my job, I am the Home Ownership Program Manager at Habitat for Humanity. So my, my job is to facilitate the process for folks that are interested in buying a home to buy a home with us because we have an amazing program. Um, we do have new home ownership opportunities um, coming up. We have three homes in our next application period, which will open on March 1st in the Oak Park area. Uh, we have a map here of the 10 lots that we will be developing. Ten infill lots over the next, I believe, two to three years. Uh, so we have ten lots in Oak Park. The applications for the first three lots will be in March of 23, and the addresses of those homes will be 20. They're not homes yet, but they will be. 2708 37th Ave, 2718 37th Ave, and 3772nd Ave. Uh, so one of the things that we're really wanting to focus on is making sure that the Oak Park homes that we will be developing go to folks who either have lived in Oak Park, want to have, uh, have lived, grew up in Oak Park, or have otherwise been displaced from the community, or have been like priced out of the market. So, so our home ownership program is amazing. I'm so proud to be doing what I do. Uh, so first of all, we have a no down payment required program. Uh, the, in, the payments for the homes are fixed at 30% of the gross monthly income for the household at the time that they buy. And that 30%, that payment will not change over the 30 years of your loan. It will remain fixed no matter how much money you earn in the future. Uh, and that payment will include the principal, it will in include an income for property taxes, and an income for your homeowner's income. So you are making one payment for your home, for your taxes, and for your insurance. It's so easy and it's so affordable. Uh, if you are interested in applying, we have, our applicants have to fall within 30, sorry, 30 to 80 percent of the area median income. Uh, we have the 2022 numbers available on our website. The 2023 numbers will be coming out in April, so we'll update those as soon as we get them. And finally, part of the, my favorite part of our program, aside from the affordable payment, is that uh, the homeowners and the family partners contribute 500 hours of sweat equity to building their homes and their neighbors' homes. So you're spending 500 hours getting to know your neighbors, building up your community, and then you actually get to move into the home. Okay. And so finally, we, are, as Habitat for Humanity Greater Sacramento, and also for our our nationwide affiliate link status. We are focusing specifically on creating homeownership opportunities for black families who have historically and generationally been deliberately and systematically restricted from the stability and 
wealth building opportunities that come along with the publicly announced this initiative and um, I can't think of a better community and a better group of neighbors to be working on this initiative. So uh, a statistic we wanted to share is pre-pandemic black home ownership in California was 36.8%, which is over 26% less than the rate for white households. Uh, the rate continues to drop and with the Sacramento region currently experiencing the lowest rates of black home ownership in over five decades. I mean, the gap is just growing, we want to fix that. Uh, so in addition to focusing on Oak Park residents who have previously been displaced or are facing displacement, we will be prioritizing outreach, specifically within the black community for all 10 of our Oak Park lots. So if you know somebody who is renting, if you know somebody who has been displaced, refer our program to, to them because we want to see those applications come in. We'll also be working, Darnell's been working in the community partnerships and been meeting with Cassandra and with OPNA and SACA and representatives from St. Paul and a variety of other organizations um, which are embedded in the community um, year round and all the time. And we'll be doing a variety of different outreach events and opportunities um, throughout, um, throughout this application period and all of the application periods for these lots to make sure that we're connecting with as many. Um, as many potential applicant families as possible. We know particularly a lot of the um, students at St. Hope, their families have already been displaced. Same with um, attendees at St. Paul. Um, you know, no matter where you live, your, your, your spiritual worship, your place of spiritual worship is always a place of spiritual worship. And so we're very excited to work with a lot of these organizations and more, please feel free to recommend if there's other organizations you think we should partner with that could help us engage with and um, create these, get these opportunities into the hands of those folks who really, um, really deserve the opportunity for home ownership through this program. Okay. Do we have numbers for Oak Park? Do we have numbers for Oak Park? Yeah. That was, uh, so yes we do, um, and unfortunately I could not find them in the hustle and bustle that I was getting out of the door. So I would be happy to share those numbers for you because we have gotten those recently from the city of Sacramento. Thank you. Uh, said something what the number of black home ownership in Oak Park is dramatically decreasing particularly since 2020 when COVID hit. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Your numbers are like dramatic. Well, I, think, I think we see gentrification long before that. Okay. 2014. Yeah. Uh, okay so finally to wrap it up uh, for the home ownership uh, part of our presentation. So we will be holding an application period for the month of March, we will have three lots in Oak Park. We will have nine, now we have nine homes that we'll be building in our cornerstone development, which is in the South Sacramento area. It's off of 99 47th Avenue. Uh, it's really an incredible development that we're building. We will be having application review hours uh, throughout the month of March during our restore hours. So if you go on our website, our restore is open Wednesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. I myself and hopefully a few members of our team will be available to review your application for completeness so that when you submit it, we have everything we need and can hopefully process it as quickly as possible. And I know we're running out of time, but we are going to be hosting application review hours at least twice in the park at St. Hope and here. So I have yet to define those dates, but as soon as we have them, I will share them. <coughs> Are the applications online? Right Not yet. Not yet. So we've got time you can turn them <coughs> Yes, this will be the period of time in which we'll be accepting applications. I'm going to be putting out an orientation video. As soon as you, we'll put that out March 1st, watch the video, you can download a PDF of the application from our website. You can either mail it in, bring it in during our resource hours, however you want to, or come to one of our community outreach. We'll also have paper applications at various locations throughout the community. We'll have paper applications available for pickup here. Um, are they easy applications? No. No. I'll be honest. It's a first application. Yeah. It does take weeks. We think that it takes about 20 hours to really fill out a complete application. We do ask for a lot of information. We have 
uh, subjective side, so we ask that you share a little bit of your family story as you apply, but it is, we, we go through every application, each page, a real person is reading every part of it. So. The application, so this is a, this is a home ownership opportunity, so the application is a traditional mortgage application, so we, re we request two years worth of tax returns, uh, bank statements for the last six months, all of your, all other credit or financial statements for the last six months. We do a soft, uh, we ask for a soft credit report with the submission of their application, and then if we move forward from qualification, then we will run a, um, a hard credit inquiry at that stage. Um, but so, but it is, any mortgage application has a lot of stuff you've got to submit with it, and so that's why Kelly's and her team can have the open, um, open office hours because we really want to make sure that you have every opportunity to know what we need, what you might be missing in your application, um, so we can give you plenty of time to gather all your documents. I think Kiara had a quick question, then yeah. we will transition. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much.
bring together 600 volunteers, and during the two days, we look to complete home repair projects and community investment projects. Um, the difference between home repair projects and community investment projects is that you all have a say in what community projects you guys want to see in your community and your neighborhood. Um, and you ask, what's a community, pro community investment project? A community investment project, and I have the definition here, um, is, an, is an investment into a community space or area which is used and or enjoyed by residents with the goal to enhance, beautify, or make the space safer. Um, another example, neighborhood safety investments in partnership with the city of Sacramento, so crosswalks, crosswalks new repair, replace street lights, uh, repair sidewalks, repaint bike lanes, etc. Um, and third, investment in facilities, programs, or other aspects of community-based nonprofits in the greater Oak Park area. General beautification projects, but all recommendations um, are welcome. Um, and Rock Club 2002, some of the community investment projects that we engaged with was um, Matthew. We helped kind of clean out his garden and help organize some of, uh, I think we laid mulch as well. Um, we helped BLM and Tanya Faison um, across the street. Um, we built a, a fence for their garden and we also built uh, garden covers for their raised bed gardens. Um, we helped Alchemist CDC uh, build out the pansy garden and kind of pull weeds at the art garden. Um, so this year, um, we're working with OPNA um, to launch a survey and a questionnaire to kind of get a post from you all. Um, like Ken said, we're the conduit of the money that the city gave us. So we want to hear from you all how to spend it. Um, so we're going to hopefully launch that today. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, how much money? How much money? How about so, I talk about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll talk about that. Okay, so as you saw in the video, um, previously, an average rock the block cost us about $125,000 to produce, and that meant that we were able to do um, approximately 20 to 25 beautification, what we call brush with kindness, um, landscaping, paint, um, water diversion, good, good neighbor fences, um, with approximately 20 to 25 homeowners. Um, in the past few months, uh, the city of Sacramento has allocated $500,000 to Rock the Block, Oak Park specifically. And even better is they have uh, they have uh, made the requirement on those funds that all $500,000 of those funds will be spent directly on anti-displacement and home repairs and home preservation, period. So um, Habitat for Humanity has been tasked with the responsibility of coming to the table with $500,000 in matching funds. And those matching funds will all be invested into the community through community investment projects. Um, so I'll also tell you another little secret. Um, so that those that five hundred thousand dollars was voted on at uh, city council a couple a number of months ago, um, and at the same time they also voted to provide an additional five hundred thousand dollars to speed up the development of the Oak Park lots. Um, and so what was originally potentially going to take us somewhere between three to five years will now be done in three years. So all ten of the Oak Park lots will be fully built and developed with ten new homeowners, uh, homeowner families, within the next three years. Um, and so what will be announced tomorrow, um, there is another, there's a press conference being held tomorrow that the city of Sacramento um, through a variety of means, uh, somehow found another five hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> um, specifically for anti-displacement and for um, home rehabilitation in the Aggie Square Investment Corridor. So nine five eight one seven, nine five eight two zero, nine five eight two four, and nine five eight two eight, and that will be announced tomorrow. Another five hundred thousand dollars. So over the next four years, Habitat for Humanity is committed to investing $1.5 million into the Greater Oak Park area.
on here that do require <coughs> permits Correct. for the city and an inspection. So how is that handled through Rock and Lot? Who, who gets the who applies for the permit? If you're helping out some lady that needs to have her in the package place. So Habitat for Humanity is the contractor on all projects. Okay. We will make sure that everything is permitted properly. Mm -hmm. We submit the permits okay. um, with our name as the contractor. Okay. Um, depending on the work that's being done, um, we are going back into homes this year. We've not been inside homes since 2020. So, um, but we will not bring volunteers into the homes. So, um, a lot of the external work, the landscape and things like that, are done by volunteers with the oversight of um, Habitat for Humanity site, um, site supervisors and professionals. Um, however, a lot of the, um, the uh, more critical work, so HVAC replacement, roof replacement, if there's um, water damage or things like that that need to be addressed inside the floor, we actually will subcontract with licensed, insured, bonded subcontractors hopefully some of whom are from the neighborhood as well, um, who will come in and do the work. But Habitat will be the over, will oversee the entire project from beginning to end. Um, we'll work with the homeowner, and member of our team who isn't here this evening, Patricia, is on our homeowner services team, and so she will be the homeowner's uh, direct point of contact at all times. Any questions you might have, um, they can all go to Patricia, and then Brian, who is our neighborhood revitalization manager, um, he is the, uh, he oversees all of the construction. So the contractor, and I believe this is how the city works when it comes to permits for any kind of home improvements that require a permit, mm -hmm. is that the owner doesn't get the permit, it is the contractor that gets the permit. Depends on who's doing the work, honestly. Yeah, if the it's... owner's doing the work, they, do, they get the permit. But if they're hiring a contractor, that contractor has to get the permit. Typically that's how you want to work. Yeah, typically that's how you want to work. So one of the things is, is that in, uh, so permit has permission, he gets the permit, you subcontract that out to that job, your permit covers the subcontract, and there's no problem with the city or anything like that. Okay, that's good because no. I, yeah. We have all the insurance in place to make that happen. That, that's wonderful. Yes. So since COVID, haven't they lightened those permits? One more important thing to add to that um, is that we have also developed a relationship with Sacramento City Code Enforcement. Um, and so we are beginning to receive referrals from Code Enforcement for uh, for non-deliberate offenders. So basically, in fact, I hate that term. Um, non non deliberate code enforcement um, violations. Basically, those folks through no harm of their own, but basically because they have not been able to afford or have the resources themselves to do the repairs or the, um, the items that they're potentially code violated for, the code will now be referring those cases to us. Um, so we can hopefully alleviate the code issue. We can get the, code, the house back into compliance and address any other health and safety or long term livability issues that we might find at the same time as addressing the code issue. So um, that's something that we're really excited about. That's a very new step for Sacramento City Code Enforcement um, to be starting to transition towards um, a perception uh, and an active involvement in helping I need to come people see you. I move out of code violation as opposed to um, keeping people in code violation. Right. So we're really excited to see that transition. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Any other questions for Habitat? I believe. I heard you mention uh, earlier about the old St. Paul. Yeah. You know, uh, do you have to do anything with that property? And I know that they have 19 properties around here they try to develop. Have you worked with them? No, I know there was a, I seen there was a caterpillar in there last year, but. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We were just members. We don't, we don't know their master plan, but no, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I know the new master plan. I know the new master plan. Uh, Charles, yeah. uh, they just developed the CDC, like maybe. Six months ago, which is on the board, and we're we're having our we're, we're just kind of doing some planning stuff right now. But we are going to start to look at the properties and see what's going to happen with them. Um, there's actually some development talks, but I can't say too much right now until we get something final. Um, probably, I'm I'm assuming I think we're going to be in March. So after that, I think we're going to start announcing. Okay. And the CDC development committee. Yes. Community yes. Development Corporation. <laughs> So just to wrap it up, we passed out flyers for Rock the Block to all of you. Um, we will bring more of those here to um, the Oak Park Community Center, and then we'll have them throughout the neighborhood. So please grab and take as many as you want, share them with your neighbors. We also have applications. This is just a single-page application, front and back. 
There is some additional documentation you need to provide with the application. And this, once we have this application and the, the basic documentation, you are an applicant, and then we will go through the, uh, the uh, review and the approval process to get you involved. Please, please share these with as many people as you can. Um, additionally, we also have flyers that talk about both the first time homeownership opportunity and Rock the Block, and they are in English on one side and Spanish on the other. So um, again, please feel free to pick up anything and everything from our table. We brought some fun swag as well. Um, but we really, you know, getting people involved really is about word of mouth. So uh, we just really implore each and every one of you to get involved. If you want to volunteer, if you if you don't qualify for our programs, or if you um, if your home is in good shape right now, then we encourage you to volunteer. We encourage your friends to volunteer. So you can also visit our website to um, get onto our pre-notification list if you'd like to be a volunteer. And as soon as we open up community volunteer opportunities in April, you'll get an email saying, "Now's the time." So um, we just we really want to have all of you join us. Um, I can't even begin to explain how beautiful being in Rocket Block is when so many community members come together. Everybody's in the same color t-shirt, and you're all just members of the same community. Right, so imagine all of those 600 volunteers all from park residents. You know what I mean? Usually it's, it's combined with different corporate funders and donors and then regular residents, but just imagine all 600 of those volunteers, Oak Park residents, doing repairs on your neighbor's fence for your neighbor. You know what I mean? So that's what we're trying to, we're trying to do. Do we get a dance? A dance? Yeah, do we get to dance? Oh, I see. Oh, you want to dance? <laughs>
Um, and I actually even started attending church. I, <laughs> uh, I, I uh, kind of fell in love with Williams Memorial and um, gained a lot of inspiration through uh, those types of engagements. So this is the design that we have submitted to Caltrans. So we are in the final stage of the stamp of approval, waiting for that big seal so that we can get the lift delivered first week of March. So this is really more of a presentation, thank you. This is really more of a presentation so you can see what we're doing a little bit down the street. Um, and uh, awesome, let's jump in. So for the 21st Avenue uh, underpass, I'm calling the mural 21st Tapestry. And this is a mural that is representing an embroidered story cloth. It's a gateway between the North City Farms and the South of the Park communities. Uh, the mural is specifically meant to engage children's imaginations through cultural imagery and symbolism. And again, everything that you're about to see is based on community feedback, um, uh, comments, and uh, what the community wanted to see. Hey, John. Hey. Before you go, real quick. Um, if you guys saw one, two, three, one of the top three best murals in the entire city on the side of the building on a, a Guild Theater. You guys saw that one before? Yeah. That's her. Wow. <laughs> Church that uh, T-boned on 21st, 
And I had a, a hard time actually connecting with the pastor. So I said, you know what, i got to get a little bit more. Uh, my emails weren't working. I even dropped off a letter. Turns out he was, on, he was traveling to Memphis. Um, so I decided to go to church. <laughs> so I, I was like, I'm just going to go. I was going to go. I, I, was, I sat in the back row. So I had like an easy escape route. And um, start, just, just fell in love with the music. Fell in love with the energy, the vibe. And to be fully transparent, you know, I'm not a very religious person. I would consider myself more of a spiritual person, uh, but I just enjoyed going. So I kept going back. <laughs> Finally met the pastor and heard his story. So this guy, I don't know if you know Pastor Larry Meeks. He is an accomplished metal worker, and he has done multiple pieces of public art throughout Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> a specific piece that he did, and I want to say that this is, um, you know, don't, I want to say that this is a Natomas. There's a piece that he did called Peekaboo, and these are two very large um, half-moon abstracted sculptures of faces looking at each other across the park, like they're playing Peekaboo. You just see the half-moon of the eyes, the half-moon of the head, and so they're connected to each other across the park. So this idea of Peekaboo <clears throat> this idea of peekaboo becomes a connection across the street and not just a linear connection. And I wanted this to be something that really related to um, you know, a particular member of the community. And so that peekaboo connection was uh, very, very poignant for me. The composition being uh, radial, the integration of the designs across the street was all something that I took into consideration. Um, so that the integral parts mirror each other. The children mirror each other across the street like they're playing. Um, and so all of that is thought out in terms of placement on the wall. When you look at 4,800 square feet, you're looking at not just that square footage, but you're also looking at where the lighting elements are. There's, there's always a dang pipe on every wall that I work. And so you got to look at where the conduit is. And all of those things take into account how you're going to compose your art piece. So this is just sort of like an idea of how you can see um, uh, what, what it looks superimposed on that wall. And I don't think, oh, you can barely see it. You can barely see these guys. This is a little family. So you can see the scale of, of the mural. Um, like this, this flower is as big as a human head. That little inside part of the flower is as big as a human head, just to give you an idea of scale. Because I have to go extra, you know, I can't just not. <laughs> um, I consider the area above the underpass. It wasn't a requirement, but the reason why I wanted to do this was something personal for me. Uh, when I was growing up, I, you guys know Highway 101. I hope you don't have to imagine you don't have to one on the Bay Area. Uh, cuts through San Francisco and it heads up to the Marin Headlands Sausalito. As you head into Sausalito Marin Headlands on Highway 101, there is a tunnel. And in that tunnel, there is a rainbow painted over the entrance. And I remember growing up, I grew up in the Bay Area, uh, when my family and I would you know, head to the city or we would go on a trip and we would go through the rainbow tunnel. I, as little four-year-old Jaya, would be so excited to go through the rainbow tunnel. We get to go through the rainbow tunnel. I get to see the rainbow. And it's magical and it's special. And I remember that to, you know, 42 years, I don't know the math, but 42 years, <laughs> I remember the rainbow tunnel. And that anticipation, that excitement, is something that these kids going to and from school will be able to experience. It's not RLs go through the underpass, you know, it's probably going to smell really good, it's not going to be, you know, a little bit dark. Um, but now we get to go through the tunnel, we get to go to school, we get to go through and see the marigold, or we get to see the oak, the, the oak leaf, we get to see the acorn. It's something that adds an anticipation to the kids, for the kids. Um, that might not have been there before. And I know from personal experience that that's something that can stick with them 
uh, for their lifetime. I like showing off what something looks like as a uh, concept versus what it looks like on the wall. So this was a Procreate concept I did of a um, mural that I did at Wellspring. Uh, Wellspring, bless you. We need more of you. And at the same time, we need a world that does not need you. Um, so this was a concept, and then you can kind of see what it looks like on the wall. I like showing this to Caltrans because explaining the art process to government workers. <laughs> <laughs> this is not how it's going to look. It's going to have style. So I like showing off just how I, how I get to present that to Caltrans. Um, and because there's going to be a couple of portraits in the mural, based on the feedback that they want to see people, that's the connection. I like showing um, a concept to construction of my Wellspring girl of uh, some portraits that I did. You can see that there's some variation in the color. Um, so I feel that's very important when, when sharing a concept design. So for the 21st Avenue underpass, we're crossing our fingers that Caltrans gives that stamp of approval so that a lift can be delivered by the first week of March, and it's my delusion of grandeur that it'll be delivered last week of Feb, you know, because I'm extra. Um, but once that happens, we get to start priming, we get to put our pay by number up, and mark your calendars. I don't see anyone getting their pen out or their phone. <laughs> Guys, March, March 18th, March 18th, we are saving the date for our community paint day. That is where you come out and we give you a little cup of paint number one, paint number two, and you go take that and you just drip it all you want over that wall. Make the biggest mess you want the, on, on the drop cloth. <laughs> but you get to do the paint by number on Community Paint Day. And that's where uh, we just have a big old party and you know as many people come out as possible hoping to have some fun uh, music, hoping to have a, you know, a couple of taco trucks. Um, but that's the big day, that's what it's all about with community. Once paint day is over, it is go time and it's on like Donkey Kong. So this is my 21st Avenue underpass design. Cross your fingers for Caltrans, and thank you guys for coming. Uh, but also to 
educate, inform, and beautify, which by the by the way are the three main principles of Chicano muralism, okay, of which I'm a big part of and of course we have to put a you know maybe going into uh, easily 60 years, the history of Chicano muralism in Sacramento, which is which we which we are actually trying to bring back, okay, because somehow it's got, it, it, it has been it has been omitted. Shona, Shona and I, from the very start, Shona and I wanted to, actually, it was part of our proposal. We proposed that we were going to create, we were going to give a gift of art and beauty to Oak Park. Okay? When we started reading the, and of course, we worked a lot with community input, we have a, we had a survey that uh, we just figured we had 50, 60 responses. We did other one by a, by a writing form, and we got, you know, how many got Yes, huh? the applicant set up at the uh, African marketplace, yeah. and uh, we had about 30 surveys uh, completed. It is that, so, yes, yes, just imagine this, okay? Uh, ask any question to anybody. Ask ten, ask ten people the same questions and how many different answers are you going to get? So now we are coming to uh, close to to the hundred submissions, and of course we got the whole right, you know, all the way from create the history of humanity. <laughs> to, 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 the, to know, the 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 definition of MC squared. <laughs> so, but then we were challenged with two very important challenges, which is which is one wall for everybody that wanted to see. Uh, Individuals want to see buildings, want to see trees, want to see the old park trolley car, the old park um, Ferris wheel, and a million th things. Okay, granted, when, when uh, we went, um, when I worked on the on the murals here in this community center, I counted, and I think we have over ten to twelve walls right here, right. So we we're, we're able to divide it into into sports, community heroes, children, cultural images. But now our challenge here was that it was going to be one of wall, and this is a wall that for the most part a person is going to have approximately two, three to five seconds to look at. Right? Why? Somebody's driving. So, yeah, right. so we did a wait. So so we decided there is a little bit of food, a food drop, a food, okay, but not not anything like 20, 20, 20 people a day. That would that would be right. As opposed to the over over here where the, the kids are are crossing crossing constantly between. Franklin and, and the old park area. So when we decided, okay, what also what we decided early on is that we were going to, without a doubt, show that diversity of old park, right, in one ball, right? Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> we we have we have collected. Uh, I actually put it in a group of artists together and just to show we got we got stuck easily 20 hours deciding how to show the Asian community and uh, in a while this big right? and um, of course the moment that we decided 
we're going to do um, uh, a reference to the Hmong culture. Of course, people will say, well, what about Myanmar? What about Laos? What about Vietnam? What about Cam Cambodian? What about Chinese? What about Japanese? What about Korean? Which all exist also in the in the whole part of the community. We can get the Chicano people too, right? But what about Salvadorian? What about third, fourth generational? Generation, what about new imprints? Right? So, uh, I'm going to show you a little piece. So, we ended up putting a uh, hundred hours of work in that, that the designs. Okay, my, uh, I'm going to, my main intuition is to just not show you my, uh, our previous work, but uh, maybe we should, because I want to mention that uh, we should. We should show a couple of things, and that's why I told you to uh, not show. Go back. This one. That's why I say don't show that because we decided against it. Not because it's not beautiful, but because there is there was a couple of images things that we need to figure out. Not not included that somebody actually. Also mention there because because they had a couple of letters there. It could be an issue with showing because right. uh, Caltrans doesn't like lettering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to me, that that's more a uh, little graphic re 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 representation. They just happens to be to look like a P and an A. Okay, so um, okay, go back to to our so one. One thing that, that we did decide on for sure from the very start when we were discussing the diversity of the region, we for sure early on agreed that we were going to show the, the Native American groups, right? Only because of the fact that probably they I mean, however, back, do you want to go, some people go back 11,000 years, some people go back to 7,000 years, but if, if we're going to talk about all part, we're going to talk about the, the whole continent of America, we have to acknowledge Native Americans first, and, and whatever happened, and every, everything else is after it. So, <laughs> that's what we have, yeah. So, uh, so we are, um, so we decided to make it the, the, the narrative piece, okay? Uh, so this is the only, we decided that this is going to be the only re, 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 representation of people that we're going to have in Yellow. And the other one was going to be colors. I'll show you the end. Oh. Well, so you can see. Um, 
just so sad. We went in and made, made it out a nice little centerpiece. We went to this guy, the green stuff. The doctor in the area. The reference right here is to um, Chinese, meaning Asian embroidery, uh, African Americans, and mm -hmm. cloth. The one right here is, is uh, yeah, the Mexican and Chicano, like, you know, the yeah. yeah. We have, I have another image, we still haven't shown this to, to uh, Caltrans, but we have uh, somebody mentioned We, I have another image where it's not a calavera, but it's a heart, just in case somebody gets ripped out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember. I remember a long time ago, I was doing a mural, and I had a lot of, a lot of skeletons or calaveras or muertos, and they were like a man like that. And a little kid came around and he said, hey, my mom said that, uh, that uh, that's the devil, that's the devil, you know? It is the same thing. You have to take that kind of stuff into consideration, right? Are you interested in like additional feedback from us, or, or are, you, are you you know kind of presenting this as like the summation of all the survey feedback you get from the audience? I'm definitely open to to feedback. But um, yeah, it's but um, I don't know if you you have a how about lighting? Dark. You're doing this on second, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we are we going to uh, see it in the dark. We are. Yeah. yeah. We are going to try to make some. Yeah. Uh, They're adding light. Yeah. They are. Okay. Yeah. Actually, this, this is not. This is probably not my final yeah. design by this whole area. I just brought in one, one, one uh, alley. Um, so we have oh, five minutes left. Well, this, yeah. Like I don't know if you could have had this experience or if anybody, anybody else here has been a, de a graphic de designer doing work for somebody else. Uh, have you ever had that experience when, when somebody said, like, oh, how about if you put a, a flock of seagulls or something? And you're going to say, like, I thought about that. A hundred hours ago, and they would go there. Oh, how about a, a kid playing soccer? Oh, that was 150 hours ago. It didn't go over that. So, um, this is not one, one city. It's so unfortunate. It's beautiful. Yes, it's nice. beautiful. I start my sister and grab it on my mom. Because we have so many designs to better, you know, you can, we got another design where uh, we were doing like, like, yes, and, that, uh, that was good, the good thing that came out, that I came out of it, it is now, now we have enough images for, for now, then, <laughs> I personally walk under that and am very excited. Okay. So I'm yeah. spending a lot of time there. More than 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you got the Chinese. The Chinese. The Chinese. What's up? What's always how much detail? Like in your image, right? Like how much detail is anybody going to be able to put in driving? Driving through, even if they are driving uh, our soul on the people. So just by driving this, our hope is that it's inspiring now. Yeah. 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 It's inspiring now. It's inspiring now. There are a lot of people that walk through here. Yeah, it's not the safest thing because the lighting is very bad. There's also broken glass, and you know, sometimes a lot of people are going to do it. Except if I was a little stressed by the crowd, also.
to keep it cleaner, you know, <laughs> more respect for the space. They are just getting it so any other, any other thoughts? We have about two minutes left, but, but you know, other thoughts that folks have or I have a, is this work part of the um, RCAA or related to the other way, of No. Yes, it, okay. Yes, it, um, the fact that they, uh, I'm here because I'm like, here maybe. This is the part of my squad because I did get a chance to work with them. Say, oh, we're still, still, we're still, yeah, we're all the whole. Yeah, wait. This is a funny thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to have to find you. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to find you between between the counters, ice cream. So, so is there a, like a contact, email address, phone number, or a good way, like if folks want to connect with you or show up? Um, I would say the I would say the What's your contact My email is Rosie at Seattle. Oh, my